we're going to talk about everyone's favorite topic, small bowel obstruction. There are two categories, mechanical, which is a physical obstruction, and functional obstructions, where the bowel stops that peristalsing thing that it do. This is also known as ileus. We'll start with mechanical obstruction. So the most common cause of mechanical obstruction is adhesions from prior surgery. In a virgin abdomen, the most common cause is tumor. Other causes include inflammatory adhesions, internal or mesenteric hernias, and external hernias, which will be discussed in another video. Volvulus, Crohn's disease, strictures, gallstone ileus, and in children, intussusception are other causes. The patient will have bilious vomiting. Feculent vomiting is associated with a large bowel obstruction, which I'll discuss in another video. They may have diffuse colicky abdominal pain that worsens as the peristaltic wave moves towards the obstruction. Obstipation indicates a complete obstruction. On exam, the patient may have scars from prior surgery or trauma. There may be visible or palpable hernias. Early, you may hear borborygmy, which are high-pitched tinkling bowel sounds. And later, bowel sounds will be absent. Begin workup with an upright KUB. You'll see air fluid levels, dilated bowel, and collapse of bowel distal to the obstruction. You may also see an obstructing mass. CT with PO and IV contrast will help to discern complete versus incomplete obstruction based off of a transition point that will let no contrast through incomplete obstruction, but some through in an incomplete obstruction. Other findings may include an obstructing tumor, whirlpool sign, which is a twist of vessels within mesentery seen in volvulus, or target sign, which is seen in intussusception. Signs of ischemia include decreased IV contrast, uptake in part of the bowel, portal venous air, or pneumatosis intestinalis, and free fluid or air would suggest a perforation. Labs may reveal a metabolic alkalosis with hypokalemia from vomiting or a lactic acidosis from ischemia. Treatment for an uncomplicated, meaning not perfed or ischemic, obstruction is to make the patient NPO and decompress the abdomen with an NG tube and give IV fluids and monitor their eyes and nose for about three to five days. Gastrograph and enema may actually be therapeutic as the hypertonic solution uh, decreases bowel edema. Small bowel obstructions due to surgical adhesions are more likely to reverse spontaneously than in a virgin abdomen. You need to go to surgery if it's unresolved after three to five days or if peritoneal signs develop such as a fever, leukocytosis, tachycardia, worsening abdominal pain, rebound tenderness, and involuntary guarding. Complicated mechanical bowel obstructions get the same medical treatment as above, but go to surgery emergently. Closed loop obstructions, which appear as two obstructions on CT, are likely due to a volvulus and go to surgery emergently as well. Now let's switch gears and talk about functional small bowel obstruction or ileus. This is caused by abdominal surgery or infection, hemoperitoneum from surgery or trauma, electrolyte abnormalities like hypokalemia or hypomagnesemia, uremia, atherosclerosis, uh, late diabetes mellitus, some neurological diseases such as Parkinson's, and drugs like opiates, anticholinergics, TCAs, antipsychotics, antihistamines, antiemetics uh, that decrease motility, calcium channel blockers, and muscle relaxants. The patient will present with diffuse, continuous abdominal pain and vomiting. They won't have borborygmy or any bowel sounds for that matter. They'll be distended. You'll work up similar to a mechanical obstruction. You'll get an upright KUB, which will show diffuse dilation with air in the rectum. The patient may have signs of an underlying etiology, such as hypokalemia or leukocytosis, and small bowel follow-through may help you to differentiate from mechanical small bowel obstruction. To treat, avoid opiates, make the patient NPO, give IV fluids, decompress with an NG tube and low intermittent suction. It's all about that suction. Monitor CMPs and CBCs, and again, go to surgery if peritoneal signs develop. Also, you want to treat the underlying cause and get that patient's hiney up out of bed. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos like this one. Remember, if you don't want to miss it, look below and click it.